What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Mass Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would love to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Julie Mitchell and Leah Matthews. How y'all doing, ladies? Y'all, it is sweater, sweater weather here in Dallas. It is Yay. cold. <laughs> yeah, that happened overnight. 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 It was like cold. Yes. You got your parka on and everything. I do. You. You, look so, I know. you look so cute. My exchange yeah. fleece. <laughs> yeah, I, I, and I got some extra cocoa butter going on the face, so I <laughs> it never works out well for me. So, but I'm super excited about today's guest. Uh, we get to hear some great music from some legends in the game. Uh, so, just to kind of get let everybody know, uh, when we did the promo for 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 this next guest. Uh, man, the fa the super fans just start hitting me up in the DMs. They were trying to make sure that this is going to be available, so when they get off of work, they can they can watch it over again. So, listen, fans, you you're going to have the opportunity. Uh, it, it's posted on my page and also the exchange page. So, uh, without further ado, uh, please introduce today's guest, Julie. You got it, Chief. We are honored to have Rock Royalty with us. They definitely have my love and affection. They are the twin of Rock and Roll Hall of Famer Rick Nelson and the grandsons of TV icons Ozzy and Harriet Nelson. They enjoyed tremendous success after the release of their 1990 debut album, After the Rain. These singers, songwriters, and guitarists are in the Guinness Book of Records for being part of a family with three generations of number one hit makers. They're here today to boost morale for the military community. Please help me give a warm welcome to Matthew and Gunnar Nelson. Hey. Hey, everybody. everybody. A round of applause. A round of That's applause. Right. Hey. Hey. That's right. Well, nice, nice to meet you. Did I, did good to I, meet you, Ledge. Hey, nice to meet you. He's not a Ledge. He's more of like a shelf part, like a mini Ledge. <laughs> clearly, <laughs> clearly Gunnar wrote our bio. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we were so we're so thrilled to be here with you, and and hello out there uh, in this strange world that we're living in to all the families out there. And and uh, again, we we heard about this about two months ago, and we've just been looking forward this forward to this ever since. So thanks for having us, you guys, all of you. Yay! <laughs> awesome. We're honored to have you guys on. And for everybody watching, you know what to do. Drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're tuning in from. And if you have any questions or comments for Matthew and Gunnar, you can leave them there too. And we'll be reading those live throughout the broadcast. Now is a great time to start your watch party to enjoy this live interview with your friends. And if you're not following us, you should because we have lots of great guests lined up for cheap chat. Oh man, Matthew and Gunnar, man. How y'all doing today? We're, We're, doing good. Good. We're doing good. We're doing good. We're doing good. Man, it's, it's such a pleasure to have you live with us today. Uh, we're thrilled to have you. Just know that this means so much to the service members, the military families, and veterans uh, to have you with us to boost morale. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. We, we kind of do everything we possibly can. We have uh, some familial connections to the military. We love the military. We always said that uh, your job is infinitely tougher than ours, but we share a couple of things, you know, being away from family for a long time, traveling for work. You know, occasionally getting shot at, you know, that kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, we, uh, we, we love the military. Uh, we have, um, well, uh, we have Marines and uh, naval officer, naval aviators. Uh, our grandfather flew in the U.S. Army Air Corps for Chenault in the China Burma Theater in World War II. God rest his soul. You know, we, we uh, and apparently when we played a show in Memphis, Tennessee, a big military, was it Millican? Uh, Millington. Millington, Millington. Uh, we have a really good friend, uh, Rear Admiral Sonny Masso, who's retired, uh, told us that they did some research, and apparently uh, there is a class of ships named after one of our relatives called the Knox class, and uh, Frank Knox, wow. I guess, was a former secretary of the Navy, and I guess we're related somehow, and I said, I don't think so, and he said, trust me, we have people that do this. I went, okay, <laughs> yeah. all right. Yes, you got to go on your Ancestry.com, man. And <laughs> <laughs> I have to admit, I am totally fangirling a little bit here. You guys, your hits were radio and MTV staples when I was growing up. My sister is a big fan too, and I know she's watching now. Her name is Christine. Um, so where are you guys coming to us from today, and how have you been during this crazy 2020? Uh, well, you know, the best we can, like everybody else out there. You know, These are unprecedented times that we're in. And, you know, I think the thing that makes uh, all of us uh, just a, a great country in general is that we're pretty good at pivoting when we need to. You know, uh, this, is, this is kind of, this is where we're all at right now. So what we did 
was uh, we here we're here by the way to answer your question at our studio our live room here in Nashville Tennessee uh, this is where we've been based out of for well, I've been here about 22 years and, and Matt's been here for about 10 and I, the venue as you can see behind us that's so right we can do it this way you know I've uh, been doing some virtual uh, some zoom calls like this and some virtual concerts and it's new territory for us but what this forced us to do was kind of reevaluate what we've been doing for a long time Matt and I've been making music since we were six years old yeah. and professionally and since we're 105 we now so. <laughs> <laughs> right. Combine that, that's 210 technically right. but, but what, we, uh, what we realized is that you know if you're not really careful and you don't question what you're doing actively you're in danger of your groove becoming a rut and we've been going out doing these weekend shows that we've been doing ever since the release of, of the after the rain album way back in the day going out doing like friday saturday shows and stuff all over the country and we've been doing that for over 30 years. And the, the, the COVID situation, clearly the first thing that they shut down were the big gatherings in concerts and mm -hmm. stuff, which stands to reason they're probably going to be the last things opened up. And it forced us all to reevaluate in our industry what we were doing, how we were doing it. And this is a rare opportunity for us to, to actually go back to the drawing board and write songs and be creative because we were out kind of doing that you know, playing the hits for everybody on the weekends. And then you, you put your head up and you realize like three decades have gone by and you love doing what you're doing and, and you're, you know, comfortable doing it, but you're not pushing yourself and you're not coming up with new stuff all the time. And not being able to go out and do those shows we've been able to do for three decades forced us to go back into the studio, kind of like put a brand new trip together, which I'm sure we'll talk about in a little bit. And Kind of, kind of use the situation to our advantage. And it's all about attitude, I think. You know? I think so too. And I think there's another thing too that's very, very crucial here. I, I mentioned, you know, we spend a lot of time away from our families. That's kind of one of the sacrifices that we've made is it's, and it's tough to keep that going. Just like a lot of people in the military understand, it's really hard on your families. And uh, the Lord works in interesting ways because one thing that we got to do was spend time with our kids and with our wives and, uh, and really realign with, the why we're doing this. You know, we, we love doing what we do. We're passionate about it. We hope we make the world a little bit better just with a song, you know, uh, or we're going to try. But, you know, when your kids come up to you and grab a leg and say, Papa, I'm glad you're home, that's a pretty nice thing, too. So there are good, there's, you know, there's a little bit of sunshine in the clouds. Awesome. Awesome. Glad you guys are doing well and enjoying this time with family. Uh, you've mentioned a little bit, you come from a famous family and also with a military connection on your mom's side. Yep. So can you talk to us about your maternal grandfather, decorated World War II veteran, Tom Harmon and his career? Sure. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Well, um, uh, well, he, he went out as a captain. Uh, he was, um, he was a football star. He won the Heisman Trophy at Michigan yeah. in 1940, wow. two-time All-American uh, he still holds multiple records in, in high school track, basketball. So he was just this all around unbelievable athlete and very famous at his time. And he, uh, he wanted to fly fighters. Actually, he wanted to fly. He started off, I believe, was it B-24 or so big Liberators? He, he was on, uh, on Liberators first mm -hmm. and his, he was preparing the, the airplanes to uh, North Africa and they hit a storm. And the, the plane went down and he was the only, he was a pilot. He told it, gave everybody the bail order uh, and he was the only person to make it. And he wound oh, up, no. uh, they sent the letters home saying he's presumed lost in action and, and or he's missing in action, presumed not coming home. And two weeks later, he stumbled out of the jungle in uh, French Guiana. Wow. And uh, I guess he said he found a Coke bottle in the sand near a river, called the river downstream. And, and he lost a whole bunch of weight. And uh, he said that uh, crossing rivers, his legs, his football legs helped him make it through. So anyways, he made it through that and then decided he wanted to fly fighter planes. And uh, he didn't <laughs> want to be, you know, and so he went back into the China Burma theater in a P-38 Lightning. And uh, he, in a skirmish, I think he uh, shot down uh, two enemy planes. It was one enemy plane or two, but the bottom line was they got him as well. Same thing happened. He was behind enemy lines for, for uh, almost 30 days and they sent out patrols looking for him and the underground hit him and there was a lot of retaliation and horrible stuff. I mean, what, this should be a book. And he wound up <sighs> making, it, uh, making it to safety because our grandmother, uh, who was his fiance at the time, had given him a, a scarf with a, uh, a map 
on it of, of where he was. And so uh, bottom line was he was burned horribly. He didn't, he didn't fly again, uh, but he went home, he trained, he trained pilots and he went out as a, he won the silver star for that. And um, basically I guess he was a high value target because of the profile that he had. And I know sure. that we have a, a former Marine, our cousin Danilo Boyne, uh, he was over in Fallujah, great guy. Dino just had a little baby. Hey Dino. Hey Dino. Oh. And hi Anna. It's, uh, it's funny, his wife, Anna outranks him. So she stayed in and they're in, in Hawaii now. And, oh, wow. Uh, they just had a little baby. She, he said that she outranks him and outshoots him. And uh, <laughs> so they're, uh, they're doing very well. But anyways, Dino was writing a, a, a script for on our grandfather, Tom. He was quite a man. And uh, I hope that that, uh, I guess in this COVID time, well, now that he's got a baby, I think his time is taken up. But he's a very <laughs> good writer and uh, a real patriot. It would make a wonderful story. We would love to hear see that hit the big screen or the or the small screen and have that story told. That's amazing. Our um, side um, is Mark Harmon, NCIS Gibbs. Yeah. yeah. So sexiest I know that man alive. Yeah, <laughs> he's a little cute, right? Uh, but Uncle Mark is just a really, really great guy, and uh, it's really neat to have him around to talk to him. I mean, we knew our grandfather. We lost him. Uh, right before our band Nelson broke, actually. So he was around for quite a while and he was a giant of a man, but it's nice to have resources like our uncle to to talk to him about our grandpa Tom. You know, it's a different different era. You know, when we see what's kind of going on now, it's it's hard not to think about that generation of uh, who were then kids that dropped whatever they had going on, including massive sports careers and joined up and did what they needed to do and didn't whine, they made it happen. And so God bless them all, we're losing them all, but uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's a real lesson in courage for everybody. Uh, and a huge sure. shout out to your family for, uh, for, for the sacrifice, your, your family definitely specifically in the military uh, that uh, kind of paved the way for me, people like me to, to wear the uniform and, and, and represent this great nation. So thank you. Uh, well, thank you chief and thank you all for what you, what you do for the military. We, you know, Gunnar and I, have, have, this is not something new to us. We're, we've always been patriots. We, you know, we love our country and everything that supported us. We know that people have sacrificed a tremendous amount. You know, it's God and country. There you go. Absolutely. So, switch, you, are, you kind of mentioned uh, about your, your tenure in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the industry, 30 years. Man, that's a long time, man. That's, that's a, a lot of old. People. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> 30, 30 years in the industry where we we're arguably getting paid, but it was many years before that where we weren't. Yeah, absolutely. We still kind of aren't. Yeah, we, well, you know, it's kind of one of those things people do ask us from time to time. What was it like living in a house with our dad? Our dad, Ricky Nelson, was a star back in his day. And uh, trying to describe to my teenage daughters the level of his success at his peak would be like, okay, I want you to take brad pitt and justin bieber and combine them and our dad was like three times bigger than that yes. <laughs> because yes. back in the day if you think about it television was brand new right oh, there yeah. were uh three uh three uh channels and a local and that's when america tuned into the adventures of ozzy and harriet the family television show the entire country was tuning into that you didn't you didn't have a million channels so they grew mm -hmm. up with our father and then he started singing when he was 16 years old on the show was pretty much the first time someone utilized the power of television to market music. And it just wow. blew up. It was absolutely yeah. massive. And uh, we grew up during our father's second career because he had that teen idol success in the late 50s, early 60s. And then when the singer songwriter thing happened in America- And the Beatles kind of broke those records. And stuff. Yeah, he had to kind of reinvent himself and he put together what the Rock Hall credits is the first true country rock band with his band, the Stone Canyon Band. Now that's what Matt and I grew up with. They, they moved our cribs out of the way in our nursery to kind of rehearse that band. <laughs> and that was that sound in Southern California at the time. It was our dad's Stone Canyon band and Linda Ronstadt and the Eagles came after that. Actually, our dad's bass player oh was one of the founding members of the Eagles. So that's kind of what we grew up with. And that, I think, lent a lot to our, between the Everly Brothers and the Eagles, that's our harmony sound, you know? So, so basically, okay. we grew up with a father who had a, a guitar in his hand all the time, was always writing was always making new music with people coming over. It was typical for like, you know, oh, hey, Uncle Bob. And it turned out, we found out later, that's like Bob Dylan was hanging out. And, <laughs> you know, it was just our normal, you know, it's what we kind of grew up with. And we, yeah, I think everybody wants to kind of like be like their father. And yep. that's all we ever really wanted to do. So 
he was out on the road doing his thing. Matt and I got our first instruments when we were six and uh, started playing clubs around LA from the time we were 12 and got our first record deal right after our, our father passed away at 18. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately that first record went number one and, and started another career. Yeah, and speaking of that, so uh, your debut album, After the Rain, uh, you you uh, recently, back in June, you celebrated a 30 year anniversary of that album. So can you tell us how you celebrated? What did what'd you do? Did you party? Wow, I mean, like I said, Chief, he's old. Yeah. You know? I mean, <laughs> it, was, it was really more of a semi celebration. We always joke and say, you know, 2020 is 2020, so we're going to celebrate it again next June because this is a do over year. Yeah, right. we, we were told that we actually get a mulligan on next year. Yeah. What the heck happened to 2020? My goodness. Yeah. Mulligan. Wow. So, uh, actually, you know, the, that kind of came away. It was, we did, a, I think we did a Zoom concert on that day, which was a lot of fun to do. And Matthew just went back in the studio for us and remastered that first record. They found the original uh, oh, source wow. tapes for the After the Rain album. Yeah, they're actually missing for 15 years because the record company. Geffen had been sold so many times and all the assets moved and not cataloged very well on that old tape. We couldn't find our own master tapes for an album that sold millions of copies, which is really weird, but somebody oh uh, found them in, uh, you know, as I said, there are no accents. Uh, somebody found them in another box for another band. They were mislabeled. Yeah, which and, was uh, wow. Uh, I, uh, I got to go into that famous <laughs> Capitol Records tower and remaster that old album and we put it out on a special edition 180 gram vinyl release which is cool because vinyls kind of come back a little bit as far as yes. hard parts yes. but yes. more importantly for us every time i heard something like you know something on satellite radio it would come on and it would sound really puny and uh it just needed to be brought up to what we remember in the studio when we were cutting it and we're so happy with the way it now sounds when you hear it on say sirius xm or whatever it's like that's how we heard it over the big speakers in the studio the way it was supposed to be. We didn't change it. It's just, you know, whatever, you know, happened under this frequency is now back. And so it's exciting that, to do that. And, and I do believe that we're going to be releasing kind of a definitive greatest hits record next year for uh, between uh, the 13 albums that we've released on our own after our, our Geffen years and the Geffen people, uh, which is now universal. We're going to put something together that's really great for the fans. Excellent. You left them speechless, Matthew. I did. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> no, that's I'm not exciting. Going, we're we're looking. No, I'm looking watch forward out, to hearing out. that. I heard crickets there for a second. That's right. No, 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 no. But we we would love. We'd be so honored if y'all would play something for us. Is there something that we can hear live from y'all? Sure, uh, we can. And uh, just to preface this, um, which uh, one do you want to do? Uh, well, I'm going to do live I think I'm going to talk about that. the old stuff. That's all right. So I can do it. Before we begin, if this sucks, it's his fault. That is okay. absolutely. <laughs> Here she comes. Seems like a rain here. Seems like a little that she's been on my mind. But nothing has changed. Thinks I'm a waste of the time. There she goes. She don't know what she's missing. Can't she see I'll never give up her life? I'll do all I can. She understands my desire. I've been on the outside. Let me into your heart. Oh, there's nothing on her that she keeps us apart. There she goes. Unmute works well. There, goes. <laughs> there goes Matt. You guys, that was absolutely fantastic. Oh, um, that was something. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was so we, much fun actually to make that first song because we had no idea when we released it. Everybody dreams of uh, being successful and, and you hope that everything you release, you know, people hear about and know about. We had no idea that action was going to go to number one. It could totally spoil us. You know, what's funny though mm -hmm. is that nobody knows the story behind that. That's why I'm really looking forward to the, the greatest hits record because you can write liner notes and stuff like that or put them online for people to read. That song came as a result of Gunnar and I trying to find our sound, you know, what would make us different. Of course, the, the twin harmonies and stuff like that. But what was happening at the time that was like, uh, and even on the label run was things like Guns N' Roses and White Snake and stuff like that. And, and our music was decidedly less bluesy and more kind of California folky. Like I told you what our influences were. Mm -hmm. And we had a guy at the record company that kind of saw, saw that. It was a little special, but he said, you got to bring me a song. And when you're starting out, nobody's going to write you a, a, a hit song and hand it to you. They save that for the biggies. You know what I mean? When you're just a new band. So God and I learned how to write songs and did that for years. And I remember we were down to $17 in a joint bank account and <laughs> kind of showed up at the record company with our guitars after writing the song because we knew we had something. It was really special. And we did what you never did with this guy. You know, we didn't have an appointment. And we showed up unannounced and we literally barged into his office. And he said, hey, get out of here. We said, sit down. We got something to play you. We played that song. And he sat and listened the whole time. And he kind of smiled when it was over. And he went, well, that's what I've been waiting to see. You guys are going to need to say, you know, yes, when people say no. And that was a hit. And he picked up the phone and said, the Nelson deal goes through. Literally, that's how it happened. And oh then we recorded gosh. it for real twice it didn't sound very good the rest of the record did that song didn't we yeah, recorded it, it, it actually wound up on the cutting room floor that's another good really for this, is that, yeah for real for real we had a lot of hopes with it and it did get assigned originally but when we went to to record it for real it just didn't, just didn't translate work. the magic wasn't there it, and we knew it and we had some other material that we felt was really strong we still believed in this in this particular song but then again it's a brand new band they don't give you a lot of resources. They don't give you a lot of support. And they, they weren't really into the idea of spending more money yet again, go back in and, and try it again. And unfortunately, it looked like that one was going to be a goner. And we wound up doing a deal over in Japan for a, a brand of alcohol called Shochu, which is, I don't know, it's basically it's like, like vodka. It's like, you know, Japanese vodka. You know, back when, when Bruce Willis and Schwarzenegger were doing million dollar jeans commercials over in Japan. <laughs> Yeah. Times have changed, but we, we were able to do because they, they were enamored by the long blonde hair. We hadn't released anything yet. Um, our agents got us a small deal for a commercial over there and we used that money to go back on our own and re-record Love and Affection. And we did it with a different producer who wound up producing bands like No Doubt and Bush after us. And oh, he was wow. like an unknown guy when he did our record. And when we finished it, we, we knew that, we could, you know, Gunnar had spent some time in Europe and overseas. We wanted to have a little bit of a slicker kind of vibe than America was producing. And we managed to really, uh, I think we really knocked it out of the park with it. I can, I can listen to it today on the record and go, yeah, it's kind of cool. It's different sound. But that was a song that we didn't quit on. That's the point that I was yeah, trying don't to make quit. is that you never really know when that breakout moment in your life is going to be. And for us, it was for that particular song, it was darkest right before we pulled it out of the trash can and took another approach at it. So yeah, our life, believe it or not, I know everybody's like, oh, your family's this, your family's that, but we were, we really weren't afforded a whole lot, uh, you know, cause we would have been a high profile failure. So they kind of, yeah, they took a kind of chance with us, but like, you know, wanted to see if we could uh, float on our own. But we spent years in the studio, but more importantly, playing clubs in Los Angeles and kind of cutting our teeth with people that weren't our fans. So we were, I think we were ready for the shot and um, you know, I'm really glad that it worked out. So yeah. am I. I can't imagine not having had that song when I was growing up. Like that, I love that song. It, it really <laughs> brings back good memories for me. Um, so how how has the pandemic changed how y'all interact with your fans? How do you stay in touch and then keep your music alive when you can't play in front of big crowds right now? Well, it's, it's a it's a drag to not be able to do shows. I mean, playing shows we love we love that immediacy of. Grandma Harry had always told us uh, that we've never been in the entertainment business. This family's always been in the connection business. So connecting with people one-on-one -on -one, uh, was everything to us and, and still is, of course. I mean, we would meet people at meet and greets for hours after shows, every show, just for that connection. We've been doing that again for decades. So we miss that part of it. 
but it's a different world that we live in now. And we realize that the upside of doing things virtually and when things get back to normal, which they will soon, uh, doing the virtual component of our, our success plan is something that we actually were, I mean, we're old guys. So we, we actually were remiss in, in getting on top of that part of our career. But when it was pointed out to us that nowadays you can reach millions of people all at once. I mean, the internet is doing now for people and for careers, what, television what MTV did for, did for us back in the day. Right. Yeah. You know, so you have to be open to that. But part, part of what we do actually in this downtime, like millions of people out there, we're learning new skills all the time. And we've been doing a lot of these things called cameos where people can kind of go um, on this yeah. cameo and they can request either they can DM us and we can talk to them that way. But we've been doing custom videos. So we have our fans calling up and lately I've been getting some really interesting requests for songs. And it's it's kind of tripping me up because they're not just my songs. It's like, hey, can you play a little bit of Bob Seger? I'm like, sure. Hey, can you play the struts? <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me learn that and I'll get back to you. And we do these little custom videos for people. And it's kind of a nice way to visit. And it helps our families out too, because, um, you know, that's remunerated. But it's nice to, as Gunnar was mentioning, we are kind of late to the game on the whole internet thing. We were like, you know, well, we were too busy out doing shows yeah. and being old school about the whole thing. And, and it had our hands full doing that, to be honest with you, because... The upside of going out and touring is that you get that connection I was talking about. The downside is there's a lot physically that goes into it. It's it's, it's not really just, in the travel. It's kind of you're in the military. You know that. It's, yeah. it's in getting beat up constantly on your way to the fight. That's it's, what it's, our life it's, is. It's the training. It's the preparing. It's it's all of the logistics involved. It's it's not it's not the actual concert that people see the two hours on stage. It's everything that leads up to that two hours. It's those those thousands of people that say on the other end of the phone, don't worry about this. We got you covered. You'll be fine when you get here. And then you get there and go, uh, this isn't fine. What's going on? <laughs> <You know? laughs> those are the days that we have to be lighting guys and sound guys and politicians yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. You, know, you just have to get the it's, job done. We're entrepreneurs and we're on a mission. So it's been a good life so far, but we're certainly not done. But the internet and I guess, as Gunnar was mentioning, the COVID thing has kind of gotten us to really sharpen our skills in other directions, which I think will make us even stronger. Yeah, we're going to get you all some, some TikTok, TikTok videos or something. <laughs> TikTok is addictive, is it not? Oh, oh my yeah. gosh. I, I, I'm I, you too know, old like, for that. Minute, what happened to those eight hours? Wait, what? <laughs> you know, oh you, my you know gosh. you've got a problem when you, you, you time your TikTok sessions with pee breaks. You know, it's like... <laughs> 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 oh, that's wow. gonna end up oh on our gosh. sizzle reel. I think. <laughs> I'm wrong. Am I? Come on, the truth is the truth. You <laughs> You're not wrong. You're not wrong. No. <laughs> So you guys, 30 years after your debut album, you're still rocking and you're also adjusting to the time. So um, can you share what's ahead for you and sure. any projects that you can share with us? Well, pretty exciting. Well, Matt touched on the, on the past. We're in the process of doing a comprehensive deal with Universal Music Group, which is the largest label in the world. Uh, they actually have our first three Nelson records. They've had them for years. But Matthew and I, after we split from Geffen in 1993, started our own label called Stone Canyon, uh, Stone Canyon Records. And we've actually put out 21 titles in all of those years. Oh, that many? That many. Where have I been? Wow. And we've been talking to uh, the team over there to take the music that they currently own from our past and our stuff and put it under one roof. And that's what we're going to be doing for the 30th anniversary, not only the re-release of After the Rain, but a definitive greatest hits for the first times for fans to get all the singles from all of the records, the best of everything we've done and put it on that. But at the same time with this whole COVID thing, it's given us the opportunity to finally press the go button on a project called Firstborn Sons, which is a country rock project that we've been wanting to do for 20 years. And a, a, a lot of, I mean, Matthew, Matt, Matt, Matt realized that um, we, the show that we've been doing since Nelson, uh, for the most part, has been a, a show called Ricky Nelson Remembered. And it's uh, basically a celebration of our father's music, lots of rockabilly and stuff. And it's made us redefine who we are as players. We've been doing that for over 20 years. And we've been actually playing country music for uh, 20 times longer than we actually were doing the arena rock stuff. And we've been putting all of the chops that we've been learning from doing Ricky Nelson Remembered into Firstborn Sons. And it's best described as kind of like the Eagles during the Joe Walsh era mm -hmm. and Leonard Skinner. 
that's basically kind of what Th we're doing. This now. will tell you. Wow. We, I, I just have, I'm breaking. This is our, our new. Check this out. Oh my gosh, that's oh, awesome. Yeah. I see, love see what that. Our are now, right here in the shirt, right? They got merch. They got merch. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah. oh, wait, wait, wait. Here you go. This is my favorite one. Check this one out. This uh -oh. is our lawsuit t-shirt. All right, yeah, ready? Exactly. This is our cease and desist shirt. Ready? Oh. 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 <laughs> there you go. Look at yeah, that. Yeah, we're not going to get a letter from General Motors anytime soon. But. <laughs> But, uh, you know, it's great American country rock. And, and that's what we actually kind of want to do is take everything that we've learned from doing Nelson and having fun with Nelson and what made that great. And, um, and what we've learned from doing the Ricky Nelson Remembered uh, country and rockabilly stuff and put it into one definitive trip. And that's what we're most excited. I think that's what 2021 is really going to be about, is about Firstborn Sons, the new stuff. Well, I mean, that's definitely the business part of it. But I think the COVID thing and, and having new projects to focus on also, Gunnar and I talk about this a lot. We are happier, the happiest in our lives, I think all of us, but definitely us, when we have a mission to complete and there's a reason for us doing it. And the horrifying thing about 2020 was the separation of everybody and putting everybody into sides in America. And I think everybody, I don't care what side of the line you're on, feels that we're you know, not being told the whole truth about a lot of things and we can't really trust certain things that we're, we're seeing or hearing or it's being suppressed and all that stuff. And the bottom line is our job as entertainers is quite literally the opposite of that, is connecting people, bringing them together. So hopefully in 2021 with this new project especially, you're gonna have you know, the Nelson Twins on a mission to bring America as close together as we possibly can through the music. It doesn't matter what you believe. I really believe that that's what this whole experiment is about. Uh, both the American experiment and, and humanity is, is trying to work together despite differences. And, um, you know, to me, music is the great connector. Gunnar and I have been all over the world with our music and we plan on doing that more with Firstborn Sons than ever before. Oh man, no joke. This is the, this is the greatest country in the world. All you need to do is travel a little bit to know that. Yeah, I just wish the kids could actually go out and see the world and have a comparison because I have a feeling it would, it, you know, the military, people in the military know this, go travel and then say something bad about where we live. Go, go, go to Jakarta and then come back and tell me how much you love America. Absolutely. So do you, yeah. mind, you guys mind playing something new for us? Or? We would love to. Is that okay? Yeah, here's a preview of a Firstborn Son song. So this is kind of what we're talking about. And uh, I think everybody can relate to this. Just a little bit. Especially people that have lived a little bit. Here you go. Just when I thought the demons I fought were dead and gone. Straight out of the blue, someone like you comes along. And I don't
that great so good and lots I, of people give i'm oh, sorry chief no 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 i'm just saying that that is a military exclusive man it, it, there you go heard it here first people <laughs> lots of people first, giving like, you love go to jail for ripping off jail <laughs> <laughs> lots of people giving you love on our live feed um a lot of people interested in those shirts so where will ah. they be able to find those where could we find them on, uh, on our website, right? Well, yeah, our, our, the nelsonbrothers.com is kind of like the hub for everything, but we're on all the socials. So if you okay. look us up on Facebook, on Twitter, on Insta, we're on all of that. And it basically kind of leads you back to this. Matthew has been working on this, uh, this store that uh, is going to house all the merchandise. Those are actually, that's a preview of the brand new t-shirts. I literally got the box yesterday. Those are the cast of the <laughs> So we haven't even gone into production yet. Um, the fans have been super patient. I'll get years. them up within a week. How's that? So all the fans well, keep they, on that and then you could pre-order and we will send it to you. So that'd be great. They are very right. popular on our feed. Oh, good. Lots That's of good people loving yeah. the shirt. Loving the shirt. Oh, I've got another one. Hold that. Hang on. Look at Gunner. Gunner's, Gunner's actually going to sling merch now. No, so, no, no, no. Or merch. Or merch. Or merch. <laughs> was, was, I, Matthew forgot one thing. Oh, we, oh what? we got a different color. They come in different colors. This is our Midwestern version of that shirt. Because oh, no, this are, is our military uh, version of the shirt. Oh, man. There you go. Oh, no, I like that one. All right. I love that. Yeah, okay, there we go. Sleeves. Yes, oh I like great. that one. Me I like too. that one. And there's one that <laughs> we can, we can so match. We, we can yes. be matchy. We'll get uh, that. There you go. <laughs> I, we'll, we'll definitely send you guys some, okay? We'll send you two chief, all right? So I think the old Trans Am shirt would be a good one. Cause I got, I have a 77 Pontiac Trans Am. That's what I drive around. I'm old oh, school, like, wow. really old school. I'm like Smokey the Bandit kind of old school. So, you know, <laughs> trust me, he's old school. That's right. It's oh. like, they can't get rid of fracking. I need to drive my car. Come on. <laughs> so, so as you know, um, we have uh, soldiers, airmen, Marines, sailors, Coast Guard members. Uh, we even got a new uh, ser a service, the Space Force. So the Space Force personnel, we got a whole bunch of folks watching. Uh, you guys got any words of inspiration or thanks for all the heroes out there? Absolutely. There isn't a day or night that goes by that we don't think about each and every one of you. And, and we are so grateful for everything you do, not only for the sacrifices that you make, but the sacrifices that your families make as well for keeping us all safe, for allowing us to be long, blonde haired idiots making music and being able to, to sleep safe at night. Um, sincerely, these are, uh, unprecedented times that we're living in and our, our faith in all of you it doesn't go uh unwarranted everybody says thoughts and prayers but we really mean it we really do pray for you and we think about you all the time i know it, it hit me a little bit closer to home uh this year than usual uh i lost my father-in-law who was a uh, vietnam veteran and uh he had dealt with the va a lot in iowa city and i saw how that's changed over the last couple of years and uh, i personally want to do anything I can if I get the voice, at least with whoever is, is, is running our country to, to do something for our, our uh, military personnel that, that make it home and have to kind of deal with stuff without kind of, it's kind of like, here, I'll take your M4. All right, have a good one. You know, it's kind of like, I think there needs to be more than that. That means a lot to me because, because y'all deserve it. Uh, you've made the, the truest sacrifices. And as Gunnar said, yeah, we're away from our family and we've had close calls traveling and stuff like that. But we always think about you it's kind of like well at least we're not you know six thousand miles away from our family for a year at a time you know and uh with people that really don't like us being there that kind of stuff so we have nothing but respect it is about honor and we really genuinely love uh the people that serve in the military we really do nothing but but the biggest respect Thank you for sharing those words and, and for also talking about your, your grandfather, Tom Harmon, as well. Um, we would be honored if you could play one more song before we close out the show. What do you sure. what do you have for us? Sure. Well, I, think, I think what we should do is there's a, a great song that our father wrote when he had his biggest comeback in the early 70s. 
And I love the chorus on this one because I think, especially for this week in particular, it, uh, it's very appropriate. You know, at a certain point, you got to follow your own dream and listen to your own heart, right? So this is a song called Garden Party. Here you go. I love that song. <laughs> Please, everybody. No, you really yourself. can't. Yeah, he, he wrote that song after he got booed off the stage at Madison Square Garden playing an oldie <laughs> oh, show for playing wow. new songs. And so oh, he wrote wow. a song about getting booed off the stage because people wouldn't let him grow up. And it became his biggest hit ever. The irony being, he had oh, to play that song gosh. again for the rest of his That's life. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> You guys, I just want to share one more time of some of the comments from the live feed. Kareen says, what a treat. I am home from work early today, and this is a great surprise. I am one happy chick. And then we also have, um, sorry, I'm scrolling fast. Susie says, I miss your pop. What a gentleman. 
And Michelle says, one of my favorite songs. Thank you. Oh, uh, well, th you're welcome. And we miss him too, you know, but I yeah. think the thing too is uh, we always wanted to be our pop because he was, you know, he's a great entertainer. He was not hard to look at, you know, um, mm -hmm. but the thing was, he was the sweetest man we'd ever met. You know, he was uh, the best of people. Just, I never saw him ever have a celebrity moment. He always treated everybody just like, you know, you should. And it was a great example. You know, he worked really, really hard to provide for us and, and really gave his life for what he believed in. And he loved his fans, you know, arguably a little more than his family because he had to make that choice. You know, that was in the seventies and early eighties. And he was uh, he was gone a lot, but when we uh, were so lucky because not only did we really know him, but we have some great music. I mean, he sold half a billion singles in his career. I mean, that's wow. it's it's amazing. At a time, he actually paid and pay money for something, and he was uh, he was quite a guy. Well, he lives um, on through you guys. Clearly, that was a beautiful rendition. Thank you for sharing that with us. Well, thank you. This has been a blast. I hope we get to do this at some point again. <laughs> I really do. This was great. <laughs> for sure for sure so you guys make sure that you go check them out on they're on all the social channels and their website is now dropped into the comments so if you want to check out those shirts or check them out on their website mm -hmm. it's in the comments for you you got it we'll make sure that you can pre-order them as i said i will actually put in a big order after this and we'll send you guys some okay <laughs> test them out <laughs> all right awesome. and, and again before we sign off guys just a lot of love goes out to everybody out there that's watching this and for all you do for us um sincerely from our family to you and yours thank you oh man thank so uh, matthew and gunner we just want to say thank you for what you do because like you said music brings us together and uh most most great things that i can remember in my lifetime have had music uh associate food and music it, those, <laughs> you know, those, are, those are two of the three for me Staples. definitely <laughs> yes and so um so thank you for for what you do um your, your family your your father your grandfather everybody they're, they're so proud of you and and, and we oh, thank you that you are like she said like julie said man they're, they're they're probably looking down and, and smiling from ear to ear on on the things that you have done uh, in your lifetime. So thank you for, for giving back. Uh, we appreciate. No. Uh, That's super super duper kind and thank you. And you know this is, uh, Gunnar. I always say that you know our life experience so far has been quite a ride. But you know this whole thing, music is bigger than we are. You know, and um, you know for everybody out there that's sacrificed so much. And you know it, it, to me the the military is all about some things that we all aspire to. You know discipline. Uh, honor, uh, uh, integrity, all that kind of stuff. Um, we, we love you guys. So thank you for what you're doing. And we'll do everything we can to make sure that we, uh, we're out there singing you the songs that, that make you feel a little, a little bit better and, and know that no matter what, I mean, one of our proudest moments was the American Music Awards 19, I think it was 91. We gave Garth Brooks an award, his very first award, actually. And I know love Garth, but uh, I remember that Desert uh, Shield was becoming Desert Storm. And Gunnar and I talked about it before the show. We were the very first people to get on a mic with that kind of an audience and say that we can't have a repeat of what happened to our, our soldiers in Vietnam. We want them to know that wherever they are right now, that they are loved, they are appreciated. And then everybody else followed suit. So I got to say in my career, that's one of our proudest moments was spearheading that movement. And uh, hopefully it will continue forever because you deserve it. It's such a coincidence that you brought up Garth Brooks because we're gonna have <laughs> we are going to have Garth Brooks on the show November seventeenth. So uh, oh, I am so come jealous. back we and love watch. Love Garth. Yeah. We do too. Tell, tell him that the twins send their love. And uh, we will it, definitely. It's been, will. it's been way too long. It's been way too long. We will. We will awesome. share that with awesome. them. <laughs> Yeah, and I'll tell I'll tell him that you said that he you you guys were the only reason he won that award and, and, and oh yeah make sure you do that <laughs> you wouldn't spend our career a little bit more than our head <laughs> awesome awesome but no thank you so much for spending time with us man this means so much to the military communities around the world uh, we wish you all the best keep giving us music and merch and, and love and, and, and uh, we'll continue. Oh, listen, you guys are awesome and li really seriously god bless you all for what you do you and uh god bless america thank you guys awesome thank awesome. you wish you all the best and uh, if you guys can hang on for a second uh after the live feed uh, i i gotta get some information from you you got, you got it. it bye y'all all right, chat out, chat out.